Ah, RimWorld, a game for complete and utter psychopaths. I love it. RimWorld is a sandbox story generator survival game set in the outer fringes of space. In layman's terms, it means anything goes and no one will judge you for your gameplay style. Yes, finally, I can turn organs into tea without the SAS breaking down my door. Well, today I, a condescending, posh-sounding British person, will try to explain why you should play RimWorld. The core premise is simple. Your party of free noodle brain chumps crash land on a rim world in the outer reaches of the galaxy. The overriding goal of the game is to simply take your chumps, build a rocket and leave the planet. Sounds simple, right? Well, allow me to introduce you to RimWorld's incredible gameplay features. Oh, Randy, no! No! So let's dive into the journey and joyous experience of RimWorld, a game that is truly like no other, as we discover why ultimately the power of storytelling is the greatest force in gaming. Also, I'm the Spiffing Brit, ladies and gentlemen. T. Connis, you're an posh British bastard who has played all of your favourite games and is going to make you feel smart for enjoying them. Right, well, let's all get comfy and let's get this started. RimWorld is an addictive game. We're talking snorting a line of tea levels of addictive. But why is this video game miracle so enjoyable? Well, say hello to dynamic storytelling. Okay, well, there are technically many ways RimWorld is more than your average survival management base builder game, but the main way is this evil maniacal wanker called Randy Random. You see, RimWorld uses a dynamic storytelling engine that will hurl events and emerging gameplay at the player to make sure that there's a constant hook and challenge from the start to the very end of the game or until you your brain turns to mush. This system of course is not unique to RimWorld. Left 4 Dead 2 had a director system where the game would simply adjust zombie spawns and challenges based on how well the players were performing to make sure that there was a constant challenge and decent bit of tension, as well as to make sure that no one run was the exact same as the last. RimWorld has three unique storytellers, each preferring a completely different structure to hamper your gameplay runs. Phoebe Chillax, the supposedly relaxing director who will hit you hard with challenges and raids, but would at least give you lots of time to rest between these challenges. Sure, this might sound easy, but really it's just a trap for new players, lulling them into a false sense of security, making them think that they've just purchased a slightly more violent version of Stardew Valley. And then BAM! Some mechanoids have taken offense to your existence. Oh, and they've used radiation to kill your pathetic potato farm, Stephen. I hope you're happy! Cassandra Classic, however, is the normal way of playing the game. She will give you a steady increase in challenge and occasionally hit you with event combos that will test normal not just your skills, but also your patience as a player. Not got enough plebs to defend your base from increasingly challenging raids? That's fine, just build some turrets, they'll do it for you. Problem solved. Oh wait, no, it's a solar eclipse at the same time, and someone forgot to build the bird tenderizer 9000 to keep the guns going. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And then we have Randy. Oh, Randy, Randy, Randy. You thought this game was going to have a difficulty curve or structure? Well, this guy believes that in the midst of a winter siege, it's a good idea idea to send a roving band of 500 domestic guinea pigs to eat your entire food stocks in a millisecond. I guess you can start seeing why so many players rave on about the benefits of eating the forbidden chicken. You see, Randy is the perfect storyteller because just like real life, you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen next. Although unlike real life, you're probably not going to find a drop pod containing 700 unrefined uranium in your garden tomorrow. Unless maybe you live in Blackpool, I hear that's a common occurrence up north. Most other games give you the the goal of survive, defeat increasingly difficult waves of enemies, and of course improve your defenses, RimWorld makes every run completely unique. It is effectively the roguelike of this management genre. Sure, games like They Are Billions have the exact same structure, the only thing that's different in each run, however, is the procedurally generated map choke points. RimWorld runs, however, will have a new map, entirely new world generations that come with challenges and benefits, the AI factions on the map are always different, and the events that are yeeted your way, trust me, they're always going to be completely completely wild and unique. Now other games are not wrong for not adopting all of these systems. They Are Billions wants you to focus of course on fighting zombies in a tower defense, not dealing with random events affecting all of your citizens. RimWorld however is a game that gives this randomized freedom and uses it to create a constantly evolving game that will present you with new opportunities and synergies on each and every different run. It gives you the feeling of anything being possible in the world of RimWorld, making it a truly unique and wonderful sandbox experience. Of course, 
course, like all sandboxes, there are walls. This game was originally the vision and passion project of literally just one man, meaning that ultimately there was only so much that he could do. So what did he create? Well, a nightmare simulator that players could sink hundreds of hours into. And then when they got bored of the game's gigantic quantity of content, they can simply download a million more mods that will reignite that wonderful joy of exploring the rim. But of course, what's it actually like to play the game? How does it even work? Wow, it's now time to talk about the actual gameplay. Do you enjoy wrangling peasants? What about training a force of idiotic interns to eventually run a world-class organ relocation and trading operation? If any of the above left you concerned or excited, then congratulations, you're going to love this game. You see, the ultimate end goal is to escape the planet, but you're going to be spending most of your time in game just focusing on surviving and improving your ragtag band of glue-sniffing pastry chefs. Survival isn't just about hoarding defenses and food, it's also about dealing with the environment you live in. Land in the jungle and enjoy your day-to-day -day battles with malaria and the plague. Land in the desert and enjoy trying to stay cold. Land on an ice sheet and, well, enjoy trying to survive. You know, the temperature, the lack of food, the inability to grow food, and the lack of raw resources. Jesus Christ, are you insane? But of course, the environment is not just your worst enemy. A jungle and wet climates are a fantastic food source and crop growth device. A desert can be a fantastic defensive weapon, and especially if you can tame the natural wildlife, you're going to have an army of jaguars. You see, the temperature of the world can be used to your advantage. Tired of prisoners trying to escape? Install a sub-zero air conditioning system into your prison and allow it to simply freeze any future unwilling organ donors. Are raiders proving too challenging for you? Simply lure them into a giant stone corridor filled with flimsy wooden chairs and then just light a match whilst breaking up the exits. Sure, some games let you use the environment to create choke points, but not many games let you surround your desert base in a gigantic minefield that lets you wait out the heat stroke on any invading force. It's insane. The game and its world can be honestly whatever you want it to be. You can ignore the standard game entirely and create a roving band of raiders that go from base to base and just pillage their way to profit. Or you can always do the old reliable or one of my classics by building a psychopath's paradise, which is actually just the front for a furniture company, provided that you're really into human leather based seating devices. The best thing is that this game won't hold your hand. I once created an Antarctic tribe of primitive nudists who needed to wear clothes of course to not freeze to death in the horrific sub-zero wastelands. But of course they would naturally have a mental breakdown every five minutes because they were forced to wear clothes. What did this mean? Well, sadly, Cold Bonia was a relatively flaccid survival attempt that resulted in the death of my entire tribe. Oh, the flags were flying at half-mast on that day. You see, RimWorld and Randy Random are fickle masters that will punish you for your silly decision-making, but every once in a while you can beat the game and play against the odds and feel like you're a veritable Bear grill, surviving out on an ice sheet just eating snow hares and drinking, well, I mean, you know what he likes to drink. But nonetheless, now you should have a firm grasp on what this game is actually like, as well as a firm grasp on your gigantic excitement for the potential of what can be done in this game. But we're going to take a twist in this review and actually take a look at what made RimWorld so popular and actually stand out in a sea of other survival games. Okay, so we've established why this game is so addictive, but wait a second, why are we even here playing the game? Because historically, games that are good or addictive don't exactly sell millions of copies. So why do we know about this game, and why is it so damn well marketed? Well, chances are if you're watching this video, you have played RimWorld, or in the very least have heard about it. And unlike most games, our first introductions with this game doesn't come from a flashy advert online showing you the fun, slow-moving, janky gunfights. That's because this game has the best accidental marketing machine in the universe backing it. The players! That's right, because why spend thousands on a marketing budget when you can just create a game that focuses on unique and entertaining player-run stories? My personal first experience of RimWorld was a friend telling me that he was playing a survival game, where the winter was so difficult he had to start eating all of his plebs. His base had gone from five intrepid survivors to two players over the course of just a few days, and with no hopes of crops being ready in time for these two survivors, he had to make the ultimate decision and decide who who should live out of his two remaining characters, the scientist or the soldier. Naturally, the science boy was put to rest and his sustenance was safely packed away in the freezer for when the soldier needed it to survive this harsh winter. And then yet, just a few hours after the deed had been done, a roving band of deer walk into the region, providing a plentiful supply of food for days. Ah, oh, God. Yep, this story had me instantly sold. A game this punishing and dynamic sounded fantastic. Also, the ability to eat people is very appetizing. 
advertising. The story marketing machine had worked on me and it's brought me right here to today. Two million subscribers later, I've told many stories in RimWorld to my audience and of course that's accidentally resulted in thousands of new RimWorld players who in turn have gone on to tell others of their stories. Oh god, you can see where this is going. Because this game is incredible, not just in design but in its ability to infect the minds of the players and expand itself at an incredible rate with no costs. This story-based marketing has been perfected by RimWorld and now we're actually seeing it being replicated across the wider gaming industry. Paradox Interactive, who made CK2 and CK3, have now actually coined the company's slogan, we make the games, you make the story. The entire marketing campaign for CK3, which I was a part of, was pitched on the concept of YouTubers telling unique and engaging stories using the game as their medium of storytelling. CK3 actually saw a huge spike in players when a changelog for a patch was posted online as it left people baffled when they read over the patch notes. For example, you can no longer lose a friend that you didn't have. Damn, that one actually feels really rough. Or other fixes like children can no longer be educated by hardened criminals. In the same way that most people are fascinated by the storytelling potential of D&D but too scared to actually give it a try, CK3 saw a huge influx of people giving it a go just to see what unique experiences they could have in this world of chaos and incest. Whilst upcoming games like Battlefield rely on the premise of exciting and explosive gameplay to sell themselves, the same cannot be said for what I like to call story bait games. EVE Online is a game I want to play simply to experience the stories that I've heard of gigantic galactic betrayals and politics that have huge impacts in a player run universe. It sounds fantastic. It is honestly a beautiful thing to witness and be a part of. Whilst the game of RimWorld won't be everyone's cup of tea, the stories the game tells can still be enjoyed by any and all. Because sure you will enjoy the feeling of getting a headshot across the map in Battlefield, but trust me, you'll never be able to forget the stories you'll experience in RimWorld. Oh trust me, no matter how hard you try, you will never forget what Randy Random has done to you! Oh, so you finally finished your first 500 hours of RimWorld and you want more? Well, allow me to introduce you to the wonderful world of RimWorld modding. There are thousands and thousands of mods for RimWorld and I am never going to be able to actually cover all of them. So instead, I will highlight the key ones that will improve your gameplay or create a fully converted new experience of nightmares. Tired of just fighting anyone who steps foot in your swamp? Why not install Hospitality, a mod that allows you to run a relaxing b and be in the countryside and turn a profit for housing trade convoys and making friends with your neighbors. But what if you hate friendship and want to terminate all of your active relationships as fast as possible? Well say hello to RimWorld Multiplayer. You and your friends can take control of a colony and watch as you join your colonists descent into madness by squabbling over who broke the stockpiles and why Sheila thought it was a smart idea to try and hunt a frambo. Bloody heck Sheila, you're never invited to my RimWorld sessions again. Be gone! But what if you don't have any friends? Friends. Well, chances are you probably play Warhammer. So say hello to the Warhammer 40k full conversion mod. They've got space marines, they've got war crime cannons, and they even have anime mech suit people. But of course, if science fiction isn't your cup of tea, then why not try out the Warhammer fantasy mod and slap the roof of that bad boy because boy can he fit a lot of Skaven inside of him. Just look at all of these rat men. Oh god, so much rat jam. But chances are, if you're an experienced RimWorld player, you might have even tried some of those mods. So what about this? This is something completely different. Take a look at the Medieval Zombieland collection. This is a group of mod packs collated by the wonderful Mr. Samuel Streamer, and it's a full conversion that puts you in charge of a medieval fantasy colony trying to deal with the endless zombie hordes trying to break down your walls. It's a nightmarish balance of survival and challenges as you battle medieval sieges and undead hordes. It really is a wonderful experience for veteran players, so honestly, give it a try. It's a nightmare. You'll love it. So, do I actually recommend RimWorld? Yes, of course I do. In my opinion, it is a perfect game. It provides hours of happiness and challenges whilst keeping the player actually engaged and excited to play more. Whilst it might not necessarily become your perfect game, it is perfect in its design and structure and fulfilling the role of a good game, which is ultimately allowing you to have fun. You know, when the biggest critique of the actual game is that it hardly goes on sale, that's probably quite a good sign. Sure, the graphics aren't for everyone, but the stories that can be developed and made are for everyone. So hey, give Give it a try and tell me how it goes. I rated 1 million drop pod guinea pigs out of one randomized boy. Go give it a try.
Well, there you have it. That's been the Spiffing Brits review of RimWorld. Ultimately, this is a game I do recommend to any and all who want to be able to live an unforgettable story and enjoy a truly unique gaming experience. This video is hopefully a first in what will become a long line of video game essays that will be looking at the remarkable world of video games that honestly, I believe, needs to be highlighted. If you enjoyed this video, then of course, make sure to give it a like because you have to. That's right, you can also subscribe because that way you'll be notified the next time a review comes out and trust me, you don't want to miss it. But what game should I review next? I'll leave it entirely up to you. Hop on down to the comment section and let your voice be known. And hey, of course, a massive thank you to each and every one of our amazing patrons who made this actual project entirely possible. Seriously, thank you very much. Pat yourselves on the back, you lovely person. Without your funding, we would not be able to do this. So thank you very much. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.